So if you've ever 3D printed something and wondered, hey, I wonder if I could uh, cast this in silver or brass, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you 3D print whatever it is that you wanna 3D print. So cute little uh, cat ears here, right? And then you take first step that no one talks about. I don't know if anyone's thought of it. Rub it down in wax. Because what happens when you try to push this in a Delft clay, it's going to stick. And then when you pull it out, it's gonna destroy your mold. And so I realized, hey, why don't I just try rubbing it down with wax? And sure enough, it worked. And so I've been casting things. And then I realized a lot of people keep asking me how I do this. So I'm gonna show you how I do it on this video. So first up, you're gonna to wanna to frame. And I already filled half of this. And I realized people might wanna to want, know, want to know how I do this. So I take a piece of cardboard. And this is pretty nasty because I've done like 20 molds with the same piece of cardboard. Um, so anyway, take an old piece of cardboard or a new piece of cardboard, doesn't matter. And then just pack the clay into one side and then stop. So some people make the mistake of, the, of putting in their ring or whatever they're gonna cast and moving on too quick. So what I found, I like to do, you can probably use other powdered ceramics for this, but I like titanium dioxide. So this is titanium dioxide powder. I think they sell it on Amazon as like a homemade sunscreen or something like that. This is excellent um, for just coating. This is food grade, by the way, so you don't have to worry about it being toxic. Um, so this has wax on it already. And what's going to end up happening, as you can guess, since this is coated with wax, like I just rubbed it down with wax, I'm going to dip it in this powder. And then... This powder is basically going to make it so that it's non-stick, hopefully. This works like 90% of the time. I've had it, I've had it fail because I didn't have it coated all the way. But yeah, this powder will make it so that it doesn't stick. And the hard part is to push it symmetrically into the clay. In other words, you want to push it in, but you want to make sure that this side is pushing as far as that side. So you want to apply equal pressure to both sides. You can even use two hands, especially since I have these weird ears on it. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I apply extra pressure to those because this side is probably going to sink in better than this side. So I'm gonna to have to pause my camera for this and then I'll turn it back on when I have it in the clay. So just kind of line it up so you can kind of see what I'm gonna do. I like to put intricate stuff down so it's not in the way of my um, sprung, sporg, whatever that um, funnel is that you carve. Anyway. All right, so now I have it pushed in. And then I want to wiggle it first. So you want to make sure that this core is fixed in the clay. And so I wiggle it here just to make sure that it's, that it's not stuck to the uh, ring. And then once you verify that, you're not going to waste your time. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time with the second half. And now you just stick the top half on. And you'll notice I also put powder in there. I don't know if that's obvious. I didn't say it out loud because I think it's obvious. Um, this clay will stick to itself. So you're gonna wanna put something on there that makes it not stick. I choose to use titanium dioxide. You could probably use baby powder if you wanted to. I don't have baby powder, so I use titanium dioxide. I was doing some experiments on my plants with uh, titanium dioxide to make it so that they don't um, wilt when I transplant them, long story. But anyway, let me show you the second half. <coughs> We're cleaning the second half, and I like to kind of like work it back and forth while I'm pushing it in, just to make sure it fills all those cracks just for the most detail on the ring. And then also you have to imagine where the ring is, the ring's right below there. So I'm just going to pack it down a little bit, just to make sure it's a nice solid mold on the top and the bottom. And if you want, you can add a little more to complete the mold. I found it doesn't actually matter. Once you have it packed in there, it's not going to slide out of the out of the frame. But some people like to make it nice and perfect and scrape off the extra. And what's the point? All right, let's check it. All right, and then we open it up, and sure enough, we have a nice, pretty ring mold. And then the trick is, of course, to pull it out on the other side. I'm not sure if I trust myself to do this with one hand. Give it a little wiggle to make sure that core is stationary. It looks like it appears to be stationary. You want to pull it straight out. If you don't pull it straight out, you're just going to screw it up. Cool. And now we just have to carve a channel so that the molten metal can get there. Do it on this side. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the right side. 
I only like to make the channel on one side. And I also get the silver very, very hot. I melt it inside of a cinder block that I basically made as a little foundry. I watched some videos online, a lot of people have problems because the silver is not hot enough. You don't need to go and buy expensive map gas, none of that's nonsense. I use a barbecue five gallon <coughs> adapter for my barbecue propane, nothing fancy. Um, but if you, if you trap the um, crucible inside of a fireproof box, then you can get a much higher temperature. So I'll get the silver to, you know, 2,500. I'll go three or 400 degrees above the molten point of silver just to make sure it's plenty flowy, easily getting into the mold. And then it takes a few seconds for it to cool down, obviously, because it's so incredibly hot. But this makes sure that it fills every recess of this. And I'll get extreme fine detail on all these imperfections as well. So, and that's okay. I usually just file them out. It's not a big deal. But I want to make sure I fill this entire mold. So it's pretty straightforward. Hope that helps you.